Hi everyone, this video is going to take you through a quick little soldering, soldering tutorial for the DigiRule 2A and the DigiRule 1A surface mount kit. So what we're going to cover in this video is just looking to solder in the eight unique components onto the board. We're not going to go through every single button, every single LED, resistor, all that sort of stuff because we're just going to be doing the same thing over again. What we will do however is have a look at how to solder in the microcontroller the battery holder, the LEDs, the resistors, the buttons, the switch, uh, more resistors, and if your kit came with them, uh, the capacitors as well. Some kits don't have the capacitors. Um, ideally, it's best practice to have the capacitors in there, but my some of my earlier revisions didn't have them. It still works fine. It's just not best practice. Anyway, so it doesn't matter which one we really look at here, the DigiRule 2A or the 1A, they both use the same components, they're just in different locations and there's different quantities of each component. So what I do have is a nice new blank DigiRule 1A circuit board, so that's the one that we're going to be looking at doing. Again, the DigiRule 2A has the same components, they're just in different locations. Now the stuff that we're going to need is a soldering iron, this one's just a cheap one with a kind of pointy tip. I like to use chisel tips generally, but I'm going to use this one because it seems most cheap soldering irons kind of have this sort of tip, so I'll work with what people out there might have. We're going to need some solder. I use leaded solder. In fact, normally 60% tin, 40% lead. It just um, It's easier to use than, than the lead-free solder, and it flows nicer. You can use a lower temperature, so that's generally the stuff that I use. In this case, I've got 0.7 mil. If you can get something thinner than that for this surface mount stuff, it'd be better, but this is quite common, so I'm just gonna use that. I have some flux. In fact, there's two different types of flux. If you're not sure what flux is for, it helps the solder to float. If you don't use flux and you've got your soldering iron and just your solder in there, what you'll find is the solder eventually just turns into this gluggy, plasticky mess and it, the solder just doesn't flow onto the legs and onto the pads of the components. It's really horrible. If you do have flux, however, you put it on the board and it, it forms like this force field or this barrier over the solder joint and it helps the solder to flow where you need it to go. I've got two different sorts. This one is a pen, so every time I push that nib onto the circuit board, it's going to grab some flux from this, this barrel and then put it onto the board. This stuff isn't the best because it's really, it flows too readily or it's, it's too viscous, I think is the word I'm looking for. This stuff is really good because it's really quite thick and it stays where you want it to actually stay. So I'm going to be using this for this tutorial. Also got some tweezers, very handy for the resistors and LEDs in particular. If we make a mistake, I've got some solder wick to suck up some of that excess solder to clean up. I've got some isopropyl alcohol and a brush, and I've also got some Q-tips and some kitchen roll to um, for the bigger cleanup jobs. Now, as far as the components go, we've got the microcontroller, got a bunch of LEDs, we've got some 1K resistors, and you'll find that no matter what board you've got, the 1K resistors will be right next to or right underneath each LED because the 1K resistors are just limiting the current through the LEDs, so they're going to be together. We've also got some 10K resistors. These are used in conjunction with the buttons. Now not, actually I should say the DigiRule 2A, these eight buttons here don't need resistors because the microcontroller has special built-in resistors for these ones. All the other ones will have a resistor right next to it. The DigiRule 1A, every single button will have a 10k resistor right next to it. So we'll need those. We've got the button battery holder right here, so that'll get soldered in over that side. And I've lost it, there it is. We've got the on off switch and some boards will have these capacitors which will be just above the microcontroller for the digital 1A if you've got that or just next to the microcontroller on the digital 2A. However some revisions don't have it, don't worry it still works fine without it. Okay, let's get started. So I've got my microscope here. Let's put this board under so you can have a bit of a look. We're going to start with the microcontroller because why not? That's the hardest part. Let's get into that. Now you may notice if I bring this microcontroller in that we need to mount it like that. So it could be mounted in one of four ways. That way, or this way, or this way, or this way. 
we need to, it's only going to work one one particular way which is this way and the giveaway is if you have a look on the microcontroller it's got this little dot or a little divot in there that needs to line up to the same corner as this white dot that you can see on the circuit board so that's how we're going to throw this one in well not throw it probably solder it is better now to do this well this is how I do it when I'm not using hot air when I'm just using a soldering iron I'm going to put some flux on the corner there in fact I'll put some down here as well but I'm going to start with the top right corner get some solder get the soldering iron now before you start soldering what I recommend you do is just make sure your soldering iron is going to accept solder onto it so to do that just put some solder on and see how it's not accepting solder at the moment well now it is but before it was just kind of making a ball on the stick of solder that I've got so you don't want that that's not good you want it to be able to stick to the soldering iron like, like we can see there if it's not sticking to the soldering iron just as I've been doing here just keep feeding in more solder until it sticks and then you can wipe it off I've just got a wet sponge over here to wipe it off with and it's nice and shiny and we're ready to solder Oops. so the first thing I do is I tin or I put some solder on just one of these pads it's going to be the top right one bit of solder on there then I'm going to get the microcontroller I'm not going to use the tweezers yet I'm just going to use my fingers to line it up on all four edges so it's a bit hard to see up here because that's a bit opaque so I'm just going to heat that a bit to make that go a bit transparent that's the flux I'm talking about there and it looks like it's lined up pretty well there so now I'm going to solder that I'm going to re-solder or reflow that solder and now you can see that this is staying in place I move it but that top right corner is is holding it I'm going to do the same for the bottom now just put a little bit of solder down there I put some flux there before so it should flow onto there not too bad And this, so the solder there formed a bit of a blob so the, the flux must have been pushed away or something but we can see that it's actually it is pushed away it's pushed all the way over here when I put the microcontroller on so it's held in place now so we're ready to get flux down here flux over here flux up the top Ugh. this is not coming out very well and flux over this left hand side as well once again, what does the flux do? It helps the solder to flow. Without it, it's going to be very difficult to um, solder these joints. <clears throat> now, I'm just going to make this a bit transparent just by heating up all the flux so you can see through. So there's all my legs. So what I'm going to do is make sure again that my soldering iron is going to accept solder, which it is. I'm going to clean all that off with my wet sponge. Now I'm just going to put a little bit of solder on the soldering iron. And then I'm just going to transfer oh, see it's not taking solder there we go okay maybe I need a new tip let's try that again a little bit of solder on the tip come on okay I need a lot of solder on the tip for some reason now I'm just going to touch each one of these little pads so touch there and you can see the solder flowed onto that pad touch it there and it flows on touch it touch touchy touchy everybody likes a bit of touchy touchy and it's all flowed on if we didn't have flux there that's just not going to work properly the solder is not going to flow onto it just by you touching it there you need to have the flux now it looks like some of this flux has gone away so I'm going to put some more on I'm going to heat up that flux a bit just so you can see it because it makes it transparent and we're going to do the same thing just a bit of solder on the tip and we touch it touch oh, I probably didn't get enough there let's touch that again touch there now this one seems a little bit harder to see but the solder is flowing onto there but perhaps from this angle it just doesn't look like it so solder has flowed onto each one of them how can I get a better angle for you it's a little bit hard Actually, did solder flow? I don't, <laughs> I don't think it did. I think I was lying. Let's try that again. So get some solder. Touch. Touch. There we go. Now it's flowing on. Now it's flowing. I think I must have had some kind of parallax error before. I wasn't actually touching it properly. 
So now you can see it's filling up with solder. And just by me touching it that with solder once, it's pretty much enabled me to go all the way to the end. I just need a little bit more. Just so I can get to the end. That one, that one, and the last one. Yeah, come on. There we go. Solder on all of those now. Let's rotate this around. We've got two more sides to do. So let's make this a bit more transparent. Let's start this top bit this time. So touch there. There we go. Touch, touch. And because we've got flux on there, you could probably find that we could touch two at a time. So two at a time. Two at a time. And, and the solder is just sticking to the one, at a, like it's not bridging them across. So let's get some more of this, two at a time, two at a time. Now try and do that without having flux, it's it's going to make a, a mess, an absolute mess. Let's do this side, already got some flux on there, make it transparent, do the same thing, come along, bit of solder, touch, touch, touch. Lots of touching. Let's do two at once. Ah, there we go. So there, we must not have had enough flux there. You can see this is bridged, which means two legs are connected together. We don't want that. So the first way to try and get rid of that is to get a little bit of flux. Squeeze it out. <laughs> just, just the right amount of flux, as you can see. Massive blob. And what I'm going to try and do is just kind of start from the let's go let's start from the top and just kind of brush our way down and see if we can get rid of that gap in between the two so start at the top we're going down and it's still there let's do the opposite let's start from the bottom work our way up bottom going up kind of flicking it a little bit and we've still got that joint so that's where the solder wick will come in handy this stuff right here solder wick I'm going to cut this yucky end off. Now with the solder wick, it's going to suck up the solder as long as we can heat it up enough. Now this solder wick is, is actually thicker than what we'd want to use for this particular um, IC because you can see how thick this stuff is compared to how small these legs are. So it's going to need quite a bit of heat to heat this up so that it will accept solder. In order to help us along our way, we're going to use some flux. So let's put some flux in there. Now I'm going to put this on top of where I want the solder to come out of. So if I try and move that there. And again, because we need lots of heat to come in here, I'm going to, instead of using the, the very end of the tip, I'm going to put it on a little bit of an angle like this. Give it time to heat up. And hopefully that solder should flow out of the legs and onto, oh, see I didn't leave it there long enough, I'm going to try and get it so the camera can see it, we want it to flow off of the legs and then into the solder wick, which it's done there. So you can see the solder wick has gone a bit silvery right there, that's because the solder has been sucked out of here and it's gone into the solder wick, but it took me a little while for the solder wick to heat up enough to actually accept it. So now you can see every single one of these is soldered. They're not joined together or they're not bridged together. Ooh, except this one, this one right here. That's bridged together. So let's try and fix it. Let's get some flux. Let's try and make that transparent, have a bit of a look. Let's, this one's not very much. So let's try, let's try and just start at the bottom and kind of flick our way up in between them. Is that going to get rid of it? No, let's go the other way. Let's go to the top. Let's go down. Still not. <clears throat> so we're going to have to use solder wick. Put some flux in there. Where's this going to go? There. All right, let's try and get rid of this. So again, I'm going to come in at a bit of an angle. Push down where I want the solder to come out of. Ooh, I don't know if I've got enough wick on there at the moment. Oh, no, I got some. Got some of that off. Chuck it back in. Heat it up. 
heat it up. Give time for the solder to actually flow. Oh gosh, I'm doing a terrible job of this one. Heat it up. Let's try and move this a bit. Not flowing. Oh goodness me, it's not flowing. Oh, it's the tiniest little bridge in there. Tiniest little bit. Oh, there we go. Eventually got rid of it. So again, this particular solder wick that I've got, this is three mil. It's it's too big for the, uh, such a job, a job such such as this one. Because it's really really thick, it means that I need to pump a lot of heat into it. And this tip is just not that good at pumping a lot of heat into such a big surface area. So a, ch a chisel tip would do a better job of that. But I would recommend using some thinner solder wick. Unfortunately, I just don't have some on hand at the moment. But you can see using flux, we eventually got there. So now we don't have any of those connections bridged together, which is good news. All right, let's go into our next component, which is, I know, let's go, let's do a 10K resistor. So one from here, 10K resistor, and we'll do one of these buttons here. So you can see, I was saying before that anytime you see a button, you'll have a 1K resistor next to it. Next to it, there's a button, 1K resistor. With the LEDs, you have an LED and a, oh, hang on. I think I just said the wrong thing. Let me let me rewind. So button, 10K resistor. I think I said 1K before. It's a 10K resistor. There's a button, 10K resistor. There's an LED, 1K resistor. LED, 1K, LED, 1K, LED, 1K. Hopefully that wasn't too confusing. Just the right amount of confusing. All right, so I've got one of these resistors. You can see they're very, very small. So even though they are very small, <clears throat> um, you, I can do these without, so I actually need reading glasses, but I can still do these without a microscope and without my reading glasses on. So, so that you can see it, I need the microscope, but it is still possible to do it without a microscope. So 10K resistor, I'm going to do the same trick as I did before, in that I'm going to get some flux, chuck it on there, let's see it so we can see through the flux. I'm going to put a little bit of solder just on one of these pads like so oh just a little bit a little bit of solder on the pad then i'm going to rotate that around just so i can get into a nice position to get my little resistor with my tweezers rotate a bit more so now i'm going to solder in just that one end now i've got a bit of solder on my iron so i'm going to get rid of that let's just solder that and so that's soldered onto that pad right there, or that pad there. This pad still isn't soldered, so now we're going to do the other side. Now because it's such a small component, there's still flux in that area, so I don't need to put more on. I'm just going to come along and a little bit of solder onto the iron tip, a little bit more. And there we go, so we've soldered that other end. So both ends are now soldered. Very small component, as you can see. doesn't look extremely pretty, but it's going to do the job. Let's now do the 1K resistor for one of these LEDs. So same sort of technique. So 1K resistor, same size as the other one. In fact, these are 0201 um, in terms of their surface mount device size, which is very, 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 very small. Let's get some flux. Let's just do this first one over here. Clean off my tip, little bit of solder into there. Let's get the component. Okay, hold the component with the tweezers, apply some heat. Oops, let's try that again. Apply some heat, move the component over a little bit. And we can see that the right hand side of that component is soldered in. Still got flux where we need it, so we can just turn this board around so that we can get the other side, which is here. Bring in some solder, bring in the heat. Oh, that's too much solder. Let's try that again. Just clean that off. Try again. A little bit of solder. And it's soldered in. Okay, got the uh, resistors in. Let's go to an LED this time. 
Now just like with the microcontroller, we need to pay attention to how we're putting this LED in. So here it is right here, you'll notice to the right of this LED, so this is this is the left side, but to the right side you'll notice it's got these two green dots, one down the bottom, one up the top. Those green dots tell you where the cathode is, and the other end being the anode. On the, on the circuit board here, these little white lines, so that white line there, or that white line there, there and there, they tell you which side the cathode should be going to. So at the moment this is 180 degrees around the wrong way. So let's put the component down, I'm going to spin it, and we're going to put the component in like that. So see how the green dots are on the same left hand side as that white line? That's the way it must go in. If you don't, if you put it in the other way, it's not going to work. Let's get some flux. So this board is going to need a good clean after this. Lots of flux. Okay, let's put a little bit of solder on that pad, like that. Let's get the LED. Come in and reflow that solder. LED in position, I would say about there. And that LED is soldered on the right hand side. Let's flip it. Let's spin it. Same thing, a bit of solder on the other side to complete the connection. And there is one LED with its 1K resistor just below it. Now we put the resistor in for the button before, right here, but we haven't put the button in. And you can see how much flux there is in there. Which is all good, because we're going to clean all that flux out in a little bit. So here's one of my buttons. So you just need to make sure that the button lines up. There should be three metal tabs on one end and two metal tabs on the other end. There's one, two, three, four points to solder. We don't solder that middle bottom one. The reason for that is the middle bottom one is connected to the case or the housing and um, if you solder that in then you can't take the housing off without desoldering it and the reason you might want to take the housing off it's got little clips on either side of the housing is the some internal part of the mechanism may break or the plastic may break or something and it's just easy to replace the internals without desoldering if you don't solder that middle pad all right so that's how we're going to put it on the first get some solder, plenty of flux there already, bit of solder on that top one, let's get the component, let's get it so you can see it, put it in, make sure it's lined up, reflow that solder, like so, so there's quite a bit of metal here so it's going to require a little bit of heat, all right, soldered that one so it should be held in place and no need for extra flux there's plenty there already I'm going to do this bottom left one. Oh, that's a bit ugly let's hold it in place a bit better let's try and solder that again let's do the bottom right that'll do and now let's do the top left And that'll do. So there's our button. Works nicely. Two more components. We've got this on-off switch and then the battery. So let's go with the on-off switch right here. Same thing. Let's get some flux. Let's make it a bit transparent. Let's do this top connection. Let's get the component. Now this is pretty good because there's these little holes on the board which actually help to line the component up in the correct spot. So now I'm just going to hold it down, reflow that connection, and there it is. It's now kind of held in place. Plenty of flux on there already, so let's just put some solder here, give it time to flow. In fact, I've put this on a little bit crooked now that I'm looking at it properly. That's all right. Give the solder time to flow. And do the back to give the solder time to flow. Well, that one will flow pretty quick. It doesn't have a big bit of metal. All right, so there's our switch. Should be working. Yep, on off. 
Oh, actually, we haven't done any capacitors. So let's do a capacitor here. Now, even though these capacitors have polarity markings with their white lines, the capacitors that we're using aren't actually polarized. So it doesn't matter which way you put them in, they'll be fine. So to do this, I get myself a capacitor. I've put solder on one pad, and now I'm just going to reheat that pad. Like that. Rotate it around, and now we can do the other, the other pad. Right here. Very good. And then, of course, we do the other one. Just as though, just as we do the other components as well. So we've only done one LED with its resistor, one button with its resistor, but it's just a copy and paste for all the other ones. The last component is the battery. So the way this would go in is with that little white dot, there it is, little white dot, that's going to be for the retaining metal clip here, is going to go to that white dot. So I'm going to solder that part in first. In fact, so I'm going to rotate this around, put some flux on, Some solder onto that pad. Probably a bit more solder than that. I'm not giving it enough time to actually heat the pad for the solder to flow. Alright, so now we're going to get this in, try and line it up as best we can, and now I'm going to reflow all of that. In fact, no, let's get a let's get a new one of them. That's a, a used one. So here's a new one hasn't had any solder on it before so we'll see how this one goes so to help with this I'm going to put a little bit more solder onto my iron just like that and then I'm going to use that solder to help a bit of heat transfer go onto this big coppery brassy looking metal so I need to give this quite a bit of time to heat that up because there's a lot of metal there so if you don't give it enough time, it's not going to heat up, and I didn't give it enough time then. It's not going to heat up, and the solder isn't going to flow where you need it to flow. So I'm just giving it enough time to heat up with this tiny little tip. And so now that's held in place, and we've only got one extra connection, which is this one here. This is a little bit difficult, because we can't get under the board. So what we're going to need to do is get some flux, chuck it in there, and we just need to come from this angle here. Let's try and have a look in there. There we go. You can see again. Now let's heat it up with the soldering iron. Try and get some surface area in there. And then once it's heated up a bit, then we can start chucking in some solder. A little bit more. And that should flow down onto the pad a little bit more. And that should be enough. So again, not the prettiest when we're trying to do it with a soldering iron. Ideally, we'd have some kind of reflow oven or maybe even hot air for this one, although the hot air may actually end up melting the plastic. Oh, okay, see so that one, I didn't leave it on there long enough, so that didn't actually go onto the pad. So perhaps what I should have done with this, and in fact I'm going to do, is I'm going to desolder this one. So give it time to heat up and melt. Let's take that off. What I should probably do is put some solder on this pad to begin with. So that way it's got something already there. Once it, once it heats up, it'll melt and then stick to it. Put this back on. Get as much surface area as we can on this one so that it will melt. There we go. You can see the solder is flowing. Take it away. That should stick there, which it has. And now let's try this one again. So we will reflow this one, and then hopefully that'll go down onto the pad, melt the solder that's already on the pad, and the whole thing will stick together. So I'm giving this quite a bit of time for it to melt. Okay, there we go. Is that enough? Let's see. There. So as I hit it, that's not moving. That's staying put right where it is very good all right so that's all our components that you can see right there well that's not every single component on the board but they're all the sorts of components that you have we started with the microcontroller we 
went to I think the 10k resistor then we went to the 1k resistor the LED making sure that the LED is facing the correct direction with the green dots facing the white line on the board then we went to the button uh, then we went to the switch the capacitor and finally the battery holder you just need to copy and paste the button with its 10k resistor and the LED with the 1k resistor all the way through the rest of the board very similar for the DigiRule 2, same sorts of components. You'll have the microcontroller and the capacitors either side, the power on switch. You have the buttons with 10K resistor, except for these buttons. There's no 10K resistor for these buttons. Uh, you've got LEDs with 1K resistors. Uh, same with these ones. These are LEDs with 1K resistors. And you got your battery. All right, so remember bradsprojects.com. Have a look at the DigiRule or the DigiRule 2 because you'll have downloads for the, the, the circuit board layout for where all the different components go. But I hope this video was informative. And uh, if you have any questions, then feel free to ask. Okay, thanks guys. Bye.